How many of you believe in rebirth? Well, it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. But let us assume that there is rebirth so that we don't need to fight about it. In this workshop, we are going to talk up for a few things which will be related to a particular um, way of understanding where we come from, why we are here and what is our purpose of life. Now I may put these things randomly, but I have a reason why I believe in these personally. I am not expecting you all to believe in exactly the same as I believe in because it is at the end of the day for individuals exploration. But for this workshop to be going ahead, I want you to for once, just for today, accept that this is a fact. And let's move on considering it and see how it applies along with various other spiritual principles that we are going to talk about today and see how they apply to day-to-day -day life, how we can use each one of them for our own well-being, for our own mental well-being and also for problem solving. Are we ready for that? Great. Okay. As I said, it doesn't matter. It's not that we have to agree on it. It is perfectly fine if you disagree. But for today, let us see where it takes you. Okay? Perfect. All right. So now let's look at it this way. If, if I was to experience certain things, it is a little more emphatic because a theoretical perspective can only take you to that extent. But if you experience the same theoretical awareness in a practical fashion, then you have already set an example for yourself to talk about it to somebody else. So to start with, why am I talking about these concepts today is because I personally have used all these principles in my own life and they work for me. Number two, current research into the subjective field of mind sciences seems to talk about the concepts of reincarnation, karma and the various principles of spirituality. These have been obtained from speaking to clients under the influence of hypnosis where they were able to access their subconscious mind and through the, sub the subconscious mind they had those excellent experiences first hand of being with a source that they would call as a divine source a source that is all permeant energy and a lot of them actually feel they are just part of this entire energy. Now, they have also experienced consistently of leaving the body into a soul state and then taking rebirth. Not just that, they have also noticed that they do take birth in groups. They have also noticed that uh, the patterns seem to repeat. What may have happened previously may tend to repeat again until those lessons are learnt. And once the lessons are learnt, then they realize that they don't need to have another birth. Okay? So this is how this, the concept of karma works. Karma is not about just doing something bad. It means doing something. Now, doing doesn't mean physical action. It could mean thought, speech, as well as action. Any of these things done is action. It doesn't need to be necessarily bad for us to have a rebirth. Good and bad deeds 
can lead to rebirth. How is that possible? The point here is a soul state in its pure form has no attributes beyond it being a simple energy, an energy. It has no attachments. So any good impression or a bad impression is an attachment. So it requires no attachment to be free. It's like for instance, if there is an ocean of water and you take a drop of water out of it, it's exactly of the same quality as the entire body of ocean. Now imagine the entire body of ocean to be that all permeant energy and you are part of this energy and you are the tiny speck of water you and the body of water are exactly the same in its quality but let's now put a drop of color into that water the uh, water into the water drop the color changes so it has developed an attribute now add a little bit of sugar into it or a little bit of salt into it it has developed further attributes now depending on what you add the attributes you like or the attributes you dislike they are all now attached to this drop of water now if this is to be taken as an example of how we understand our soul state soul state in its pure form was that colorless tasteless form of water droplet it has no attributes but the now but now the drop has acquired so many attributes it just carried on one after the other it just kept on adding now this is how we need to understand whereby this this particular drop is now only allowed access back into that body of ocean when it is able to let free let go of all these various things that it added to itself like the color the salt or the sugar let it all be removed and once these are all removed then this drop of water is going to merge into that body of ocean without identity that is the way that is the way or that is the nature of under, that is how we can understand the nature of this cosmos i hope that is clear and let's move on ahead and when we look at other concepts what we are then looking at is called dharma dharma is the the summary statement or the word which captures all the various attributes of spirituality and there are a list of them that we can utilize now how did we even come to uh, these understand or know of these spiritual attributes they are all required they are all perhaps essential for this particular drop to be able to go back and merge with the body of ocean for instance as we talked about attachment an attachment where it has taken over a color and so on what happens along with it is a purpose the purpose that they the the original state that it had that meaning is lost and a new meaning has been or new identity has been taken over when the new identity is taken over then the mind starts thinking that it is a different entity and when it talks about being different especially from another drop which has different colors and so on and so forth then it says 
mm, I am better than the other one or I am lesser than the other one and so on. So then what's happening is the mind is starting to think and is actually forming a lot more impressions. It may therefore do certain things, the actions with expectations. Now, if those expectations are to be removed, then it actually reaches a state of stillness in its mind. And similarly, the senses that we use may also be kind of used for purposes which were not supposedly um, to be uh, used in the original form. We may abuse them, we may use, overuse them or these tools may become ourselves or we identify with ourselves with these tools instead of having the knowledge that, that the tools are just for us to utilize only to make efforts to return back to that ocean. It may sound a little complicated here, but perhaps we can look at examples later on. So what I'm trying to say is that the principles according to dharma help us maintain or re reach that state of purity back again, that original state, let me not even call it purity, it helps to reach that original state yet again by applying certain of its principles. But you may ask a question, well, I'm not interested in all that. I'm not interested in, you know, just going to join back the ocean and so on and so forth. I just want to have a happy life. But happiness, how many of you would think that happiness is a permanent state? It is not. It cannot be. No state is permanent. A closest possible uh, equivalent is being content. But the difference here is uh, being content means that we are not going for any extremes of our emotions. We are ha accepting our situation the way it is. We are trying to learn from difficult times and still make, make sure that we are content. Even when we have surplus, we are not exceeding our emotions, but still trying to be content. So, content is perhaps a good way for me to explain the original state. Right. So, similarly, so this is what we would call as sthita pragna, a state where there is an emotional balance despite hardships or joyful occasions. I'm not saying that we will be boring, but it's an, it's, it's an extremely effective way of ensure, ensuring that we don't tire ourselves with emotional overburden. Okay, so what we have spoken about so far is one of doing things without expecting any results, another of staying in a state of emotional balance. Now it's not difficult for us to see they have direct application in psychological well-being. So let's look one at a time and as we go along we will look at certain case scenarios as well and then let's at that stage I'm happy for us to have an open discussion so that we will be able to all learn together.